I think there's a place to walk through. Get on the floor! Get on the floor! Get on the floor. Get on the floor. Welcome to First Person Defender, where regular people come face to face with unknown attackers. Drop the gun! And fight their way out. This is First Person Defender. You're leaving a restaurant with your family when things get dangerous in the parking lot. You're carrying a gun, but is your family part of the plan and do they know what to do? Watch what happens right now on First Person Defender. These force-on-force -force scenarios use training guns that fire non-lethal projectiles. My name is Joel Hill. I'm from Mandeville, Louisiana. I work in the commercial diving industry. I've been doing that for about 22 years. I have a beautiful wife, Georgia, and three teenage kids. I've never been in a scenario where I needed a, a firearm or I've felt threatened in any way. You know, I, I don't think anybody should look forward to getting into that position, so, but just to be able to know what to do if that, if that occurred. My expectations today, uh, I have no idea. I really am excited to learn because I've never been through something like this. I'm really excited to see how it all plays out. I'm really excited to walk away knowing a lot of things that I didn't know coming into this. Joel seems like he's a pretty squared away guy. He carries a gun 50% of the time. Now he trains in martial arts and I know that from talking to him, but carrying a gun 50% of the time, I think right now he's thinking I'm way underprepared. And we've got a special trainer from HK, Philip Topino, to talk about it. Philip, you had a chance to listen to Joel. You know some of his background. What are you thinking? I think it's scenario training is the most valuable thing that someone can do, and we've got some really good scenarios that, with his daughter involved, is going to definitely take it to another level. You work at WAFT. What does WAFT stand for? WAFT stands for Where Our Families Train. We're a private facility outside of Orlando, and we like to include you're your own first multiplier, and your family is your true asset. So we want families to train together, and today is gonna to be a perfect example as we customize this training for him. Joel escorts his family from their favorite restaurant when trouble comes rolling in. Will this commercial diver know how to overcome a tricky situation, or will his family suffer? Get on the floor, get on your knees, get on knees. Get on your knees. Get on your knees. Get on your knees. Hurry up. I need money. Give me the money. Whatever you have on you. Come on, let's go. I don't want keys. I want money. I don't have wallet. money. Did you want? Wallet. Did you want? Anybody else? You have a purse? No money? No money. Dude, you just came out no, of the freaking no restaurant. Money. Are you gonna tell me you had no money? No. Stop moving! Dude, you're pissing me off. I'm gonna shoot your ass if you keep moving. I need you to see if you have any money. There's no money here. There's no money there. Let me see your pocket. You go back inside. Index, index, index. Okay, so tell me what happened, Joe. Uh, well, my wife and daughter and I were walking out of the restaurant coming to uh, my vehicle, and uh, a vehicle had pulled up in front of us and a man jumped out and pulled a firearm on myself and my family, and they uh, demanded us to give him money, which um, I tried to give him the keys. It just seemed like he was getting a little bit more aggressive. It seemed when he went to take and kind of move the firearm off myself, it gave me an opportunity to maybe engage him. Did you get hit? I did. How many times? Twice. So you did what you thought you had to do. Um, he was being pretty relentless with you. Yes. I don't know if it could have been, uh, it seemed like the more I said I didn't have anything in my pockets, the more aggressive he became. Well, I watched it from a distance. Let's bring in Philip and see what he saw. Great job giving your car keys. If someone wants to rob you and they just want what you have, give that to them. Avoid at all costs. But what you saw was that he was being very 
he wasn't leaving, right? And you were you were very aware when now when you got to the ground, tell me what you saw at that point. Uh, when I got to the ground, it just seemed like um, as I'm looking up at a man holding a firearm on my family and I, it was it was in my mind, he wasn't willing to, the, to conversate, to come to a deal, to be happy with my keys. When you got to the ground, did you feel that you had a lack of mobility at that point? I did, I did, because I was positioned on on my knees, you know, to try to maintain that stay in front of my family. As he would move around, I would try to rotate around, which would, in turn was making him nervous, telling me to stop moving. Here's the thing I wanna, I wanna cut to the chase. I'm gonna give you the, I'm gonna give you the power. You don't always have to obey every rule that he says. And you can still give him what he wants and still keep a tactical mm. uh, advantage. So going to the ground limited your mobility. Yes. And it's still something where I would be like, yeah, yeah, sure, here. Yeah, listen, no problem. Yep, I'm gonna go down. Is that all you want? You know, asking him questions back, since this is your first scenario, that's a really good thing to do is, we want to interrupt the way someone thinks, and we can do that by also asking them questions, asking figuring them questions. out what he needs. So Philip, he did some things really well. He did, the, the bad guy was just completely divided attention. He didn't know where he was going to point the gun next and who he was talking to. And he did expect movement. So when he told him, give me your wallet, and he just keep his gun back here, he was reaching for something. I knew he didn't have a wallet in his pocket. Right. He was reaching for that gun. Right. So scenarios are very difficult. And in that scenario, he wasn't going away. And when you had to use your firearm to defend yourself, Think about moving off the X, getting away, creating distance from your family. That way, because if yes. you're gonna draw a gunfire, you don't wanna draw it towards yourself. Yes. Well, I think Philip's gonna have some great training points for you. We're gonna give you some training points. We're gonna help you with your mobility. We're gonna help you to be able to get to your firearm a little bit better. And we do have one other concern. When you were firing, you fired until your gun was empty. And one of your rounds, came all the way back here and hit Philip squarely in the chest. So we're gonna talk about some of that. The HK MP5 is probably one of the most copied carbines in the world. But if you want an HK, you gotta get an HK. Now they have the SP5, the sporting version of the MP5. Short, fun, cool, historic, nine millimeter, fun to shoot, What's not to like? Check out the HK SP5. All right, Joel, that was a wild scenario, wasn't it? Yes. Let's go back and give you some concepts to work on better so that if that were to happen again, you've got a little more tools in your toolbox, okay? okay? First off, I'll have, uh, I'll have our bad guy come up. That's been cleared and chambered, so it's, it's unloaded. So we're gonna roll through this. First off, you guys don't have to go to the ground because what he wanted was your car keys and he wanted your wallet, right? And you gave him everything you had, but there was still a loop. He wasn't complying. So come back over, let's, let's role play this. So you don't have to get on your knees this time, okay? You don't have to get on your knees. You go to give him everything that he wants. You've given it, but now, point the firearm to his feet, but now you've given him everything. I've given him everything and we're, he's not going away. You guys need to not stack up behind them. You guys need to get on a side, pick a side, right? Mom and you, know, you two on this side. So Joel, yeah, you're moving off. So you're creating some distance between them because he's not taking what you've given him. And now they're on this, they're, they're have more distance from you. This is where carrying at four o'clock is actually a good thing. I like to carry appendix, or at least at three o'clock, because this is a better gun fighting, because I can, I can reach with both hands if it's more three o'clock or appendix. But four o'clock was great for you. He's pointing the firearm in, and at some point, he's not leaving. Now I want you to think about turning away, like I'm gonna give you, my wallet's in my back pocket, and I'm turning away, right? And now you're actually not going for the wallet, you're blading for this. And what I want you to think about is I want movement before you draw, because remember this last scenario? There was a point where you were trying and you knew there was a moment of opportunity that you saw to draw your firearm. Yes. 
In the future, when that happens, I want you to move before you draw. Does that make sense? Yes. If you just draw your firearm, he shoots, it's right on. If you go to run away, he doesn't have to change the angle of that much at all. If you go 90 degrees, he has to move, but not that much. But if from here, you aggressively move towards his dominant offside. So he has muscles, push against me here. And you're not as strong, pull. You're much stronger in that direction. So these are little things, the aggregation of marginal gain. These are little things that we're gonna do together that's going to give you more of an advantage when it here, it's a no, it looks like a no-win situation. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. So, <clears throat> he's gonna point the gun in. When I say go, you're going to drop into an aggressive sprinter stance and you're gonna move in this direction. I want you moving before you draw. Uh, bad guy back up a little bit more, okay? On the go command. Look, look, here's the keys, here's the wallet. He's not listening, he's not following directions. So with that one scenario that happened really fast, we've learned a lot of different points that we can take away from it. It's, a, it's a, the equivalent of getting a car crash and then die in, in analyzing all the data from that. We're showing some concepts that there is no one right thing because in the moment things change dynamically. But in that scenario, the takeaway is distance. Distance. You don't have to do everything the bad guy tells you. Don't put yourself in an area of disadvantage by dropping to the ground and limiting your mobility because mobility in a gunfight is a lot more important than people give it credit for. And then if you have to defend yourself and you have to move, move first and then draw the firearm. And you might find yourself shooting one-handed. You guys did great, let's do it again. If you want to survive a real-world experience like you see on First Person Defender, you need training. And we provide classes and training at Range Ready Studios. We have pistol classes, rifle classes, advanced concealed carry, and even First Person Defender experiences where you get to run through many scenarios like you see on this show. Go to rangereadystudios.com to sign up now. I don't know about you, but if someone gets a drop on me and tells me to get on my knees, I'm gonna be very, very concerned. There's not much I can do about it if they have the drop on me, but if I end up on my knees, because that's what happens, I wanna give you a couple of pointers about maybe a way to try this. I'm gonna get down on the ground and show you. If someone tells me to get down on my knees, I want to curl my toes under. Now these shoes are kind of hard, they're rain shoes, but I can still curl my toes under. So from here, I can actually hop myself up into position and get down again. If I put my laces on the ground and I sit on my heels, before I can move, I have to take the weight off my heels. I got to get my toes underneath me, shift my weight, and hop up. I know that it's not a great trade. If someone's here and they have a gun pointed at me, I'm already at a severe disadvantage. While I'm down here, if I can keep my eyes on the bad guy, I can move to my gun in a four o'clock carry position like I'm getting my wallet. I'm getting my wallet, I swear. I can come out with my gun, but if I stay here, this may not be the best place, especially if I miss with my first shot. I'm gonna stand up again. So someone gets the drop on me. I move to my knees because that's what they want. I keep my toes curled under because it gives me the ability to spring. They, they tell me to reach for my wallet or give me their money. I make my move, I give you my wallet. 
I get my gun in my hand, I come out. I can make shots, I can jump back up, and I can move. Not very quickly, but at least I can move. If someone tells you to get down on your knees, you have to assume they are going to assassinate you. So have a plan. Something as simple as knowing how to position your toes in a kneeling position could save your life. There's a reason why shooters like the HK VP9 so much. Modern striker fired polymer pistol holds 17 rounds of 9mm, it's optics ready, but the grip and the trigger is something you notice when you pick up this gun. A nice grip, a nice trigger is going to help you be a better shooter. And of course, HK quality. On the range or concealed, it's a good option for you, the HK VP9. First Person Defender brought to you by HK and T4E. Back at the restaurant, Joel and his family depart to head home. Is his training enough to overcome an impending attack? Get on the floor, get on the floor, get on the floor, hurry up, get out, on the floor, bro. No, no, wait, I need money, I need your money. Get wait, wait, wait. You want it. Stop, stop, stop moving. Stop moving, get away from me. Wait, wait. Stop moving, get away from me. Here's the wall, you can have that. You can have that wall. You can have the wall. I'm watching you, bro. I'm gonna shoot you if you move. You can have that. I'm gonna shoot you. I'm gonna shoot you. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. I need that you first. Get, first. get the first. Index, index, index. What happened? Um, well, we came out of the restaurant. Again, this uh, stranger came out of the car, very aggressive, came uh, at my family and I, and I feel like we implemented what we talked about last time, so we separated, we fanned out a little bit. He didn't seem to be very, um, he wasn't very satisfied with the fact that I was giving him everything I had again, and was threatening to fire on me if I kept moving. Um, I saw opportunity when my wife told him, here's the purse. And as he looked towards her, I tried to move away and take advantage of that opportunity. Again, I think I had some good hits, but I, I took hit two hits at the same time. So. That was a lot, wasn't it? That was a lot. First off, be okay with losing, meaning giving him everything you have. And what I want it next time is I want more vocal. more vocal. There's my stuff, man. Just take it and leave. I didn't hear any a verbalization, that verbal judo that we referenced. Yes. I did really like the separation. How much distance? Do you feel more comfortable that your family was far away from you? I did, absolutely. And the, the reason you took rounds is the proximity. He, you guys were very close when that happened. And while he wanted that stuff, I didn't feel like he was going to shoot you had you not drawn. I feel like you could have avoided that gunfight had you said, man, I've got nothing else to give you. There's my wallet, there's my stuff. Because again, I don't feel like he was trying to abduct you. What was he saying to you? He just wanted my stuff. Wanted me on the ground. Wanted my keys, my wallet, everything I had. Good so. job not getting on the ground. I feel like that gunfight could have been avoided had you more used your voice. Our most powerful thing a firearm is just a tool. What's yes. our most powerful tool? Your brain. Our brain. So really focus on that. Say, man, I'm giving you what you want. I got nothing else. It's right there. Take it and leave. Your family's far away from you. You've given yourself more options. Use your voice more. Philip, I feel like if, if he would have distanced himself from the personal items, maybe he could have gotten out of that bad situation. Very good point. Very good point. What does that mean to you now, going back and looking at replaying that scenario? What are the couple more things you could have done that might have avoided it? Possibly thrown 
my items farther and backed away as opposed to moving, uh, staying where I was. So start backing away, maybe give a little more distance when you toss him your belongings. It's very hard to reset to zero. It is hard to reset it's to, hard to zero. zero. Yeah. And these were some tough, these were some tough scenarios we put you in. The gun's already out and you really applied the concepts that we showed you from the first run to the second run and just a little more thing, a little more distance. Uh, I think that would have been the, the key, the winning solution. To see all of Gun Talk's content, go to guntalk.com, guntalktv.com, or sign up for the Gun Talk newsletter.